In today's video I will be creating a custom library for one of my recent projects. Custom 7 segment display build based on WS2812B individually addressable LEDs. If you have never done this before and would like to learn how, stick around. What is Arduino library? Arduino library is a collection of code that makes it easier to perform specific tasks when working with Arduino microcontrollers. Libraries contain commonly used functions that allow developers to quickly integrate functionality into their projects, without needing to write all the code from scratch. Before I start creating a library, I need to show you how my custom 7-segment display works. You can check out my video I made on this topic, but here also I will recap the code I wrote for this project and use it as a starting point when building the library. So to display digits on this custom 7 segment display, I wrote the sketch using FastLED library. First I had to declare several variables like pin to which the display was connected, the number of LEDs we would be controlling, the default brightness, the LED type, and the color order within those LEDs. Next we need an array of CRGB objects where each entry corresponds to one of the LEDs. Finally we also need a mapping table in which each row provides the LED states for each digit. With all this in place we can initialize the display in the setup function and set the default brightness. In the loop function we have a nested for loop. The outer loop iterates through digits 0 to 9 and the inner loop iterates through segments 0 to 13, setting them according to the mapping table. When a segment needs to be lit, we set the corresponding entry in the LEDs array to red. If a segment should be off, we turn the LED off by setting it to black. Once all the segments for a digit are set, we run the fastled.show command to display the current digit. After waiting for two seconds, the next digit is processed. To test how this code works, let's connect the custom display to the Arduino. Starting by connecting the ground and 5V pins and connect the display signal pin to digital pin 5. Now power up Arduino and upload the sketch to it. As you can see this code works great. But it's quite complex and I don't want to include it every time I write a sketch that uses my custom display. Also, if I were to turn this little project into product, potential buyers wouldn't need to understand how the display is built internally, how many LEDs were used and how they are mapped to individual segments. Buyers would most likely be interested in having a single function to display the digit they want. This function could provide even more control like setting up the color of the digit and adjusting its brightness. We can go even further. The custom display I created supports daisy chaining, so we could add the index of the display in the series of displays on which we want to show the digit. So we can remove this section of the code and instead of using the nested for loop, we simply call the digit display function with the four input parameters we just discussed. If we have multiple displays connected in a chain, we end up with a multiplication of 14 LEDs to control. With a single call of the function, we want to manage only the 14 LEDs that belong to the display selected by the display num parameter. To determine the starting index of the first LED of the display where we want to show a digit, we use this formula to calculate it. Once we have identified the correct starting index, we first clear any previous states for the 14 LEDs associated with this display. Then a for loop iterates through the mapping table and updates the LED states for the digit we want to display. Setting the lit LEDs to the color value passed as an input parameter. Finally we set the brightness and run fastled.show to reflect the changes on the display. Let's check if the corrected code works. I will also introduce a second display connected to the one we had before. I have already uploaded the corrected sketch so all we need to do is power the Arduino. As you can see the result is identical to what we had previously. 
Now let's make a few changes to the code. To control the second display, we need to adjust the number of LEDs. We no longer have just 14 LEDs. With the second display, that number increases to 28. Next, we'll alter the function call to display digits on the second display in magenta. Let's reload the code. It works. I must say this display looks great. Now that we have this function defined, it can serve as a foundation for creating a library that simplifies the way my custom display is used. By moving this entire section of code into the library, we allow the function to be executed without exposing the underlying complexity. Additionally, we can hide the mapping table within the library, as the end user doesn't need to know it even exists. Before I unpack all this, if you enjoy this video and you want to help out, please give it a like. It's quick, it's free and it helps me out. Also consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you want to help further, please check my PayPal, Patreon or channel membership. And now back to the video. What does an Arduino library consist of? The header file declares the functions, variables, constants and classes that are available in the library. It acts as a bridge between your Arduino sketch and the actual implementation of the library. Source file contains an actual code implementation of the functions, methods and classes declared in the header file. This is where the logic of the library resides. Examples. Libraries often come with the example sketches that demonstrate how to use the library's functions and features. These examples can be very helpful for getting started with the library. Keywords. This file provides syntax highlighting for the library in the Arduino IDE, make it easier to read and write code. And finally, library properties file. This file contains metadata about the library, such as its name, version, author and other details. It helps the Arduino ID manage and display information about the library. Let's start by building the header file. First we check if the macro has already been defined. If it hasn't, we define it now. This inclusion guard prevents the header file from being included multiple times in the same project, which could cause errors due to redefinition of classes, functions and other elements. We declare a fast LED library to work with individually addressable LEDs. Next we define a new class called Custom7SegD. In C++ a class serves as a blueprint for creating objects, which can contain both data, like variables, and functions like methods. In the public section we define the members of the class that are accessible from outside the class. These are functions and variables that can be used within any Arduino sketch. Public members are essentially the interface of the class providing the functionality that the user interacts with. Here you have a constructor which is a special function automatically called when an object of the class is created. This constructor has three input parameters. The number of seven segments display we will use, a pointer to the array of LEDs, and a brightness parameter which sets the default brightness for the LEDs. Next we have a method to display a digit. This method takes four input parameters. The index of the display on which the digit will appear, the actual digit to display, its color, and its brightness. We could add more methods here, but for now we will keep it simple with just this one. In the private section, we define members that are only accessible within the class itself. These private members are not accessible from outside the class. Here we have three variables that are similar to the input parameters of the constructor. How these variables relate to the constructor parameters will become clear when we look at the source file and the constructor definition. So now let's create the source file. First we include the header file we just created. Next we define the LED mappings that we had in our original sketch. This time the mapping will be accessible only from within the library class and won't be directly visible in your Arduino sketch. Then we define the constructor for our class. Here you will see how the private member variables are initialized using the input parameters passed to the constructor. There is no need for additional code in the constructor body, but you can add some if necessary. Finally we have a method to display the digit. It's essentially the same as the function we created in the original sketch. 
so there is no need for further explanation here. The library properties file should look like this. I have not filled in all the data yet, but if in the future I would like to make this library public on GitHub, then I will fill in all the blanks. Now that we have all the components of the library in place, we can organize them in a directory structure. Then we can compress it and use it to install the library in the Arduino IDE. First we need to create the root directory with the name of our library. Inside this directory we place our header file. Note that the file has the same name as a root directory with a .h extension. Now we place the source file in the same directory using the same name but with a .cpp extension. Additionally, we add the library properties file to this directory. If you want to provide example sketches, create the example subdirectory within the root directory. In the Arduino IDE, we can create the example sketch. This sketch won't work yet, since our library code isn't installed, but we can save it. This will create a subdirectory with a sketch name in the Arduino main directory containing a sketch code file with the .ino extension. All you need to do now is copy that entire sketch subfolder directory into the examples directory. Now that we've placed all the components into the root directory, we can compress that directory into zip file and our library is ready for distribution. I cannot even start creating the library for this project without the support from PCBWay, the sponsor of this video. They turned my idea and design into this slick custom PCB, which I then used to craft this custom seven segment display. I'm sure I'll be turning to their expertise and products again. If you have any ideas floating around, don't hesitate and turn them into reality with PCBWay. It's time to see if the library can be installed and if it will work. For testing purposes I have two displays connected in the chain once again. This time both have 3D printed segments mounted. The connections are simple, ground to ground, VCC to VCC and signal to signal. So here I have my library directory. Let's look inside. You will see the header and source files as well as the properties file. There is also an examples directory. Inside I have placed two sample files. One will count from 0 to 9 on a single display and the other one will count from 0 to 99 on two displays. Let's zip the entire directory. Now we can open the Arduino IDE and attempt to install the library from the zip file. Go to sketch, include library, add zip library and then browse for the archive we previously created you should see the message indicating that the library was added to the library list. Let's check if we can see the two examples that came with the library. And you can see them here. Let's open the first one. The code looks similar to the code we created previously, with few notable differences. You can see the declaration of our custom library at the beginning. However, you do not see LED mapping table, nor do you see the display digit function definition. Instead, you see the object of the custom 7 sec D class being created and in the loop when executing display digit function, you are executing the function that is a member of the custom 7 sec D class. Let's compile it. As you can see, we have digits from 0 to 9 in red displayed on the first display. Now let's open the second sample sketch. It looks the same apart from the loop function. Here we have a for loop iterating through numbers 0 to 99, extracting the most and least significant digits and displaying them in different colors on display 1 and 2 in half second intervals. Let's upload the code one last time. How about this? The code and more importantly the custom library work great. Is this the most optimal library definition for this project? Absolutely not. I could move all FastLED related declarations and code into the library as well, but that would be quite complex. I wanted to keep things simple to explain the concept of the custom library using a fairly straightforward example. I could also add more methods like ability to lit selected segment of the selected display in desired color. In my next video I will be using those custom displays of mine to build a digital clock. By then I expect to have a final version of this library, 
so you will be able to see how much more room there is for improvement. This is a wrap for now. I will see you guys in my next video. Ciao!